Hello dears, we'll start our discussion for today with the basics of IFRS. So in a few minutes, we'll start having discussions regarding what is actually IFRS is, who issues IFRS, the contents of the IFRS, the package of IFRS, and this is basically an hour long video in which I'll provide a brief understanding of each and every major IFRSs that are currently being issued effective or may not be effective because there are certain standards which are not yet effective but we will still discuss in this video so my major focus at the beginning will be delay will be over the latest one so the latest standards are ifrs 15 which deals with revenue from the contract with the customers the ifrs 16 which deals with leases and ifrs 9 which deals with financial instruments so these are not a very small standards. These are substantial standards. These are very sub bringing very substantial changes in the accounting and reporting requirements. So when we move towards these standards, so we'll discuss in the later part of the video. So let's start focusing on what is actually IFRS. So I assume you know the definition of any style. You know the full form of IFRS. So IFRS stands for if you do not know let me write international financial reporting standards so it is basically a standard a principle based standard unlike US GAAP it is based on principle these are more based on principle so it's a principle based standards which helps the entities which helps the entities to report transactions in the books of accounts for example a incorporation bought some goods from b incorporation so this is basically a transaction right for suppose for one thousand dollars so basically it's a transaction so a incorporation need to record this and b corporations also need to record this so if they are following IFRSs, it provides a certain guidance on how they can record these transactions. And I know this is one of the most easiest example that I can provide it to you. And next, it is international. This is not like any other standard. This is international, which means it is recognized internationally, recognized internationally. So if someone wants to understand how many countries are following IFRS, which means how many countries have either adopted IFRS or either converged with IFRS, which means some changes are there in the standards or they have adopted the standard as it is. They can go to the IASB sites. They can go to IASB site and they can understand. It will take a minute for them to understand but the a particular country is applying IFRS or not and if they are applying whether they have converged it or they have adopted the entire IFRS so the next question is who issues IFRS our next topic of discussion we discuss this thing right what is IFRS so IFRS is basically a principle based standards which helps you to re which helps the entity to recognize a particular transactions now let's discuss about who actually issues IFRS uh, let me start with a new slide. Mm, yeah. So the question is who issues IFRS? So until 2001, until March 2001, there was a body called IASC, International Accounting Standard Committee. So these, this body is responsible for issuing IFRS till 31st March 31st March 2001 so IAC was the issuing authority till 31st March 2001 but due to some political reason it was replaced by another body then it is called IASB which is present so IASB is the present tense and this is the past tense so IASB issues standards IFR standards now so they basically issued around 17 IFRSs till now 17 IFRSs till now and they have endorsed certain IFRSs I'll discuss this thing 
in detail within few minutes but they have also endorsed certain standards that are issued by IASC previously so for the time being who issues IFRSs if, if, if someone asks you okay who issues IFRS so for now it is IASB International Accounting Standard Board is the one who issues IFRS so previously it was IASC International Accounting Standard Committee so this is the thing and we'll start discussions on our next topic and the next topic is the contents of IFRS okay so let me write this thing the contents of IFRS so when we say we are applying IFRS so what to exactly mean okay I this is me <coughs> okay this is me I'm saying I am applying IFRS so what do you mean what do you mean with that so IFRS is nothing but a package of principle based guidance which comprises IAS yes it is old but it but I told in the beginning that IASC is the one who issued IAS and IASB is the one who issued IFRS and IASB endorsed certain standards endorsed certain standards issued by IASC so which means certain standards are endorsed by them so if I say if an entity is applying IFRS it not only means the 17 IFRSs that are issued by IASB okay it includes IFRS I acknowledge the second thing is this also includes the IAS that are endorsed by IAS, IASB so okay fine so majorly all of the standards are endorsed by IASB which are issued by IASC and certain interpretations okay sorry for my spelling and handwriting so certain interpretations so IAS uh, like previously IASC issued some interpretations which are called SICs and some of them are issued by IFRIC so this IFRIC, uh, IFRIC stands for International Financial Reporting Interpretation Committee and SIC stands for Stand, uh, Standard of Interpretation Committee so these interpretations also forms part of IFRS okay so if someone says I'm applying IFRS so IFRS in a nutshell involves the following four items the first one is the IAS issued by IASB the IFRS 17 we have now the SICs these are basically interpretations SICs and IFRICs so this is basically a package this is basically a package and the package if I unbox the package if I unbox the package called IFRS I'll get these four things so uh, I came across many people that they, they think that only IFRS means the 17 IFRS that are issued no exactly IFRS means all these items all compliance with all these requirements means we are complying with IFRS so the next discussion is the contents of the IFRS we discussed and another part I want to discuss about what does any standard says any standards apart from some reporting standards are uh, under IFRS so I'll name them like IFRS 7 which deals with financial instrument disclosures or IFRS 8 like segment reporting or IAS 34 regarding interim financial reporting so apart from these reporting standards when we read any standards okay apart from any reporting standard apart from any reporting standards the standards helps you to provide guidance regarding four major items regarding a particular transactions or classes of transactions so apart from any reporting standards a general standards will provide you guidance for in in respect of four areas that we are discussed 
the first one is to recognize recognize a particular transaction it will specify when to recognize a particular transaction in the books of accounts for example if an entity has entered into a stock option with its with its with its employees and on the grand date the entity generally do not recognize any transactions actually happened in the books of accounts so at the year end they record so i at the period end they record the expenses for the value of intrinsic value of the options or the shares that they have given up for in respect of the employee expenses so it specifies when to recognize it specifies when to recognize recognize means recording in the books of accounts so when to record transactions when to record a particular transaction in the books of accounts then the measurement measurement it specify by how much amount by how much amount do we need to recognize the transactions in the books of accounts so first we recognize a transaction okay we need to recognize the transactions at the period and for example okay but tell me by the amount i need to recognize the monetary uh, monetary concept i need to recognize transactions right so i need you need to you told me to recognize transaction now you're going to tell me by how much amount i need to recognize a particular transactions then it deals with presentation how we need to present this transactions or these kind of group of transactions into the financial statements for example ies ies 32 gives the liberty to set off the financial asset with the financial liability but it provides some conditions like if uh, if i'm willing to do it and if if i'm legally allowed to do it so ies 32 specifies for a setting of a financial instruments or in case of ies 12 like uh, IS 12 for taxes uh, any deferred tax asset cannot be classified as current or non uh, as a as a current asset or or a, or a current liability it should be classified as as non current asset or liability it has to be presented as a non current asset or a liability so how to present them how to present the present the transaction or the category or classes of transactions in the financial statement how to present them and the fourth item is the disclosures regarding this for example if you have any financial instruments you have to comply by the ifrs 7th disclosure requirement if you have a particular transaction you need to disclose certain items for example if your transactions with a fair value you need to you need to disclose the the, the hierarchy of the fair value which is dealt by ifrs 13 but it specifies you need to disclose something and you need to go to the ifrs 13 to calculate the fair value again so this is the basic thing that any standard says so till now i'm going to provide you a recap the first thing we discuss is what is actually ifrs i uh, so ifrs is basically a uh, a principle based standard is which is internationally recognized which helps the organization to recognize a particular transactions so who issues ifrs previously ifrs were issued by iasc and then due to political reasons it is replaced by iasb so iasc issued standards called international accounting standards and uh, which are endorsed by or which are supported by I, uh, iasb and iasb issued ifrs so if i'm applying if i'm saying that i'm applying ifrs i'm applying all the endorsed I, ias issued by iasc plus the ifrss plus the interpretations issued by both sic's and ifric and the fourth one we discuss uh, sorry and the we we further discuss regarding what's the what's what's the particular particular standard says apart from a reporting standards like when to recognize the transaction by how much amount and how to present them and and what are the disclosure requirement so shortly we will discuss regarding the latest latest standards like ifrs 15 16 and 9 so i'll start with ifrs 15 now you can go for a coffee break or or for a um, drink or you can go for a drink of water we will discuss in this in a in a minute